for the remainder of the, the folks who are on, you know, this external fixation of the calcaneus, at least in the initial time period, uh, can be extremely powerful. And it's, it's relatively simple. You don't think, you don't think about it uh, as commonly, but it's something that's extremely uh, or markedly shortened. Um, a pin in the medial distal tibia, a pin in the tuber from medial, which doesn't go across all the way, and then something into the uh, base of the first of the medial cuneiform in a triangular fashion can actually allow you to get uh, length and restore some height to the tuber if you think that you're going to have poor skin issues. So something to think about, you know, we almost, you know, at least many of the residents and, you know, and, and I'm not saying that I use it frequently, but in someone who's got horrible, horrible skin, uh, a way to just kind of maintain some shape to the, uh, to the calcaneus before you can get to it. Now, it's really interesting because that, you know, kind of dovetails a little bit into that second case that uh, it showed, which is, which is honestly just a, just a complete disaster. I mean, that is a, yeah. uh, I looked at that and, and with, along with the soft tissue issue injuries and at two weeks, uh, in my mind, I think, you know, some of the initial discussion is, you know, what is, you know, setting kind of expectations with the patient um, because that's going to be a long road, regardless of, of which way you, you progress. And, and I would actually have a, a realistic conversation with the patient, depending on what they wanted to, you know, you know, where they were at, uh, about the fact that this may end up with, with an amputation, uh, because, you know, it's, uh, some people are, are just of the mindset that such a poor, poorly functional, you know, uh, lower extremity is, is not worth. Uh, is not worth the multiple surgeries and the, you know, the issues with wound healing and stuff like that. I think a lot of the, uh, you know, I guess that being said, a lot of the rehabilitation now with the Adeo brace, I don't know if people are familiar with that, uh, but some of these, you know, the military is, is experience has shown us that um, some of the new prosthetics that are out have markedly improved the function of, of people with just otherwise non-reconstructable or, severely post, you know, severe, you know, post-traumatic arthritis or bone loss or whatever. So if you haven't flicked down some of the videos uh, at some point during this long holiday weekend, go and look at the Adeo brace uh, and see some of our, you know, our wounded vets and their, their ability to recover from um, some of these IED injuries and stuff like that with, uh, with some of this new technology. It's kind of an energy um, capturing uh, AFO, if, if, if I can kind of put it simply. So uh, it's pretty cool. All right, so we got a we got a couple minutes. Um, yep, you can go ahead. Go ahead. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna blow through a couple of cases. I, I have to tell you, in you know, my disclosure is that um, I still don't know what I'm doing with the calcaneus, uh, and I every time I every time I think I've I've made headway uh, in terms of you know how I can uh, reduce and fix these, and you know what technique I'm using, and just generally speaking, that's you know, an open lateral extensile versus, you know, a sinus tarsi and percutaneous approach. Um, I continue to kind of flip back and forth and, and I don't, in full disclosure, I do not, I have nowhere near the uh, surgical skill that I think, you know, Dr. Sanders or Dr. Banershka have, uh, or, or a handful of other people who are much more skilled at, at some of these very complex fractures. Um, this bone continues to plague me. So this is a 39-year-old uh, male, fall from ladder, has an open, um, medial wound and you can see the um, the fragment on the medial side which which created the open wound uh, again most of these are open medially if there is going to be an open um, if there is going to be an open wound uh, the plantar wounds are the ones that are are the really bad injuries because that usually means that the talus if not fractured has um, displaced pieces of the calcaneus commonly um, some of the body or the posterior facet down through the plantar aspect of the foot. And if uh, you know the strength of the plantar skin, that's a pretty pretty high energy injury. So I'm going to stop here and, and maybe Harmeet, I'm going to flip this to you just because it's going to be a, you or anyone else who wants to chime in. Um, you can see the, the CT scan on the, on the right and I apologize, uh, but it's a three-part facet, three-part posterior facet. Uh, and I'll just go back. Let's see. Can I go back one? Here's my thing. And this is the other. This is the other image. So this is your injury day. Injury day zero. Um, I don't know, Harmeet. Can I can I engage you here? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah no worries. Um, so, so I look at, so things I kind of look at, number one is I, I, I look at kind of the overall morphology of the calcaneus on the lateral x-ray. And I see that the tuberosity, one thing that stands out to me is I see that the tuberosity is actually writing above, kind of above the subtalar joint, right? So definitely that, that calcaneus has lost tremendous height. Um, as well as you look at that comminution. So that lateral, that medial piece right here is sticking out. So it's also lost a whole lot of length. So obviously this, it's an open injury. Uh, so we have to take care of the basics first, right? So we have to take care of what we do with open fracture treatment. I think that is the first stage. Um, so we're gonna do uh, an irrigation debridement. I, I would not, um, for me, with these, um, I you know I, I don't make like an extensile medial uh, incision. You know, I, I would open it to to um, uh, wash out, clean up what it is. Um, is it a poke hole open? I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Is it small? Was it big? You know, I, I have to be honest with you. I don't remember. I think I don't think it was. I don't think it was overly impressive. But you had access. You had direct access to the to the tip of that medial to the tip of that medial fragment. Okay. Uh, so yeah. So right I'm. Here. I'm washing this out. I am doing the standard care that needs to be done for open treatment management. And for me, judging by the morphology, the loss of bowler's angle and all of that, um, because that tuberosity needs to come down. Uh, you know, for me is uh, if the soft tissues are looking like, are, are not looking really good. Um, I do put a, um, uh, an, an X fix on these. It just depends on where that open wound really is in terms of that, where my pin placement is going to be. Um, but if it's amenable, if I'm amenable to it, meaning that everything is working in that favor, I typically would put a X fix to bring that tuberosity down um, and get some length and let this kind of cool out a little bit before I definitively, uh, definitively treat. Now, if, if it's not working that way, then obviously we have to do other things, but that's usually what I do with these types of injuries. Yeah, you can see the loss of loss of right here if you follow the posterior aspect of the talus back down. You yeah. see kind of where this heads into the, you know, what we see in the posterior transition to the anterior facet and the medial mm -hmm. over on this side. Uh, but this is a pretty, you know, pretty shortened uh, injury. So and you can see kind of how flat and another thing is you can kind of see just kind of how flat the talus sits as well, right? So. Um, yeah. That also is a big uh, a radiographic sign in my mind that uh, I, I do things a little bit more acutely for this. So, and I don't have all the, in, or I don't have all the uh, the films. And, and again, this is a, a couple of years ago. I'm, I've, like I said, I've gone on these swings because I don't really know what I'm doing with these quite yet. Um, but was able to utilize. I do remember utilizing the open wound, and you can if you can see my pointer. Um, I had a finger read. Uh, through the open wound to be able to push that that piece in, which then allowed me to dial in um, with a, a a shoulder. I believe I used a shoulder hook or a chance pin, one of the two, to get my tuber height and um, length. And then I used a sinus tarsi and and uh, placed a screw across the posterior uh, facet once I had it kind of well lined up. And then I was pretty happy with you know how I and there's a sequence of events here that went through. You know, in terms of getting uh, the the screw position and holding with K wires and transitioning to cannulated screws, um, and so I use three cannulated screws. I think the position of these screws, you know, just need to note that again the the anterior facet on the lateral side is this is the longest you know area. So you want to make sure on the on the in the hair seal view that your your long screw is heading lateral. Now, the one thing that the percutaneous technique doesn't do is it doesn't allow you to uh, dial in any sort of uh, uh, lateral or take care of any lateral wall blowout or anything like that. So here's his initial post-ops. Uh, I probably should have taken out one of these fragments means it was in the open wound. Um, and then here he is at a year uh, and you can see his, his heel uh, is, is well aligned. Uh, he's gone on, but he's also gone on to some, you know, develop some subtalar arthrosis. Um, Posteriorly, I, I can't remember when I put in the second screw, but uh, two screws just around where the the primary fracture lines were that I could see through the sinus tarsi, and then uh, screw fixation. He ended up actually doing okay. He was complaining of some some post traumatic um, yeah. uh, subtalar arthrosis. Yeah, that was great. I I mean I would clarify um, that 
you know, if the soft tissues were amenable, yes, go ahead and acutely fix, right? Not, not always stage with the next fix, but uh, if the soft tissues were looking like real crap, then for sure, that's kind of what I would do as a stage a bridge procedure until I can come back and do definitive fixation. It's a lot easier to do it day one, obviously bringing that tuberosity down. Yeah, for sure. Anything percutaneous is, is easier earlier. Uh, so this is, a, I'll just finish up and I'll go through quickly and I want to be respectful of everyone's time, but this is again, just, you know, I, I lined up a bunch of cases and it's just, it's just kind of back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, um, and this is a 27 year old male missile landing while doing parkour. Um, if you uh, are unaware, parkour is an urban athletic holistic training uh, discipline. Uh, it's just these, these dudes who are like, and dudettes who are uh, jumping from stuff and like, they're the, you know, they're, they're jumping from buildings and stuff like that, but he missed a landing uh, and presented to my clinic uh, like this. And this was, uh, I, I want to say this was like six or seven days out. This is no soft tissue issues um, whatsoever. Um, and you can see, and you can see this and uh, this is a CT scan. And so actually a relatively simple uh, posterior facet, I would, you know, I call this primarily two pieces. This this fracture line here was minimally displaced. So, um, you know, probably a two, if you really want to get into it, it, you know, it's maybe a Sanders three, if you count this, but overall one large, one large piece. Um, and at this point I was, I'd become frustrated with some of my uh, percutaneous uh, endeavors in the, in the calcaneus. And so uh, again, I'm going to, move so I can, so we can get to the, the talk on antibiotic nails, but um, just wanted to show very quickly the, you know, don't forget the lateral extensile is still a very powerful uh, approach when uh, done carefully and one done correctly. And that's, you know, that's coming in and, and leaving in a very respectful manner, but um, the chance pin, the partially threaded chance pin in the, in the tuber, I think is one of the most powerful uh, parts of this case. And so you can see the bent Kirshner wires um, that are placed and then bent with a, a Fraser tip uh, sucker in order to allow kind of a no touch uh, technique and then restoration of the, the critical angle and then good axial heel views to make sure that the tuber is, is lined up. The lateral wall is off. This is the huge void here. This, this large area of radial lucency uh, is the area of, uh, of this area of the defect. And then the lateral wall is, is put back. The area is bone grafted. You can see all the kind of the crush can, I just use crush cancellus, um, bone graft here, set my plate uh, position and uh, check my bowler's view, make sure my posterior facet uh, is reasonably well uh, aligned. And then non-locking screws first to bring the plate down to bone, get my heel width, uh, set and then exchange those out for uh, locking screws. I think my, I could have been longer with some of those posterior facet screws to get into the, the, um, the constant fragment here. That's my one critique and then I am off and you could see it on the bowlers you before but I am off on the posterior facet here a little bit but otherwise I was pretty happy with how I had restored his, you know, his heel varus and then restored the uh, posterior facet and I, you know, unfortunately I saw him like once, I can't remember if it was once. Yeah, I saw him like once afterwards uh, and this is where he is, he was at. And then after that it was, uh, he just hasn't come back, I guess back to parkour. But this is, you know, 20, even a 27 year old male, large amount of bone grafting in the, you know, in the area here underneath the posterior facet. Uh, so, so far so good. But like I said, you know, my, I mean, my follow-up was, follow was only about three or four months with him, but, which is not enough to, you know, identify any post-traumatic arthritis. So That's I'll great. stop there. Um, I'm three great. minutes over, so I apologize. But, you know, like I said, both techniques are, are amenable. If you're going to do something percutaneous, just do it early, I think. And don't forget about the lateral extensile. Yep. Very good points, man. Good job. The hardest part for the hardest part, honestly, and I even, even the best ones, the hardest part is really looking that far medial, right? To, to reduce the medial part of the lateral facet all the way over. That's for me, it's always been the hardest thing to do because no, no amount of light can get that far <laughs> over to really look at the joint. So that's yeah. always tough. But those cases look great.